views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Welcome to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly Neff. This hit show will illuminate your senses and empower you beyond your daily stressors and hardships. Renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly will captivate you with far-reaching topics and amazing guests as you wake to the greatest version of yourself. Learn to tap into your intuitions, think critically about our world, heal emotional and psychological wounds, and follow your passions to live your dreams. Each week, you'll learn how to navigate the global shift of consciousness and explore the deeper knowledge within. Welcome home. Now here's your host, Dr. Kelly Neff. Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Kelly, and you are listening to Lucid Planet Radio on Transformation Talk Radio. Stay with us for the next hour and let us help you experience healing, knowledge, and creativity. Every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern on Lucid Planet Radio, we will have some of the most gifted scientists, healers, speakers, and authors helping you to discover the greatest version of yourself. You can find out more at thelucidplanet.com and listen to all of my show archives at lucidplanetradio.com. Now, today's show is about a very interesting topic that I think has far-reaching implications for the way we view ourselves, our connections with others, and our world. What happens after we die? Is it possible to communicate with our loved ones on the other side? And if so, what kind of messages do they have for us? Wouldn't you like to know? I certainly would. Um, Today, I'm delighted to welcome world-renowned psychic medium Bill Phillips to the show. And I just want to give a little bit of background on my relationship with Bill, who I met in 2011, so four years ago now, when I was undergoing a lot of personal difficulties and a real crisis of faith in my life. Um, I had lost direction. I felt lost. I felt confused. And as a woman of science, I did not believe in the afterlife or spirits or anything. Um, basically because it had not been something that I had been able to measure or empirically experience in any way. I really wanted to believe, but with no proof, it was a huge challenge for me. And I felt very alone in the world and I struggled to kind of see the purpose in my life. And a friend suggested I go in for a reading with this psychic, Bill Phillips. And of course I went in there very skeptical. I'm imagining like Miss Cleo or something. And, um, but really what happened during that reading changed my life and it completely altered the way that I viewed my existence and my reality. It gave me a feeling of confirmation that there was something more than just this physical realm. And Bill brought through messages from people that he could have never possibly known about with a level of accuracy that seemed completely impossible to me at the time. I racked my brain trying to explain how he could have known things about me, about my deceased friends, and even deceased friends of family members and deceased family members from so long ago, but I literally could not explain it. And so my reading with Bill really sent me on a different life course, and it opened my mind to the possibility that we are not alone in this world, and that our loved ones on the other side are still very much here with us, guiding us, supporting us, and really sharing these deep messages of unconditional love. And I went to see Bill a few more times over the years, and each time he continued to show me that confirmation of this universal truth that does exist beyond what happens subjectively in our minds. He knew dates, places, names that would be literally impossible to know. And he made many predictions that later came out to be true, uh, sometimes even years later. For example, years before I had any intention of doing this, he predicted that my partner and I would be moving to Colorado and changing our career paths. And at the time, we thought, there's no way. He's totally off. It's nonsense. And here I am now living in Colorado. And the crazy part is if you read his website, Uh, He's done this for literally thousands and thousands of people. So he really is the real deal. So we are very lucky to have him on Lucid Planet Radio today. And we are going to learn what it is to be a true medium or channeler and what kind of lessons we can learn from his journeys and his experiences connecting to the other side. And we're also going to talk about his upcoming new book, Expect the Unexpected, which is out in the fall. So let's please give a very warm welcome to Bill Phillips on the show. Hi, Bill. Hi, Kelly. It's so great to have you on. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Um, I guess the best place to start is, uh, how do you explain what you do? Or what is a psychic medium? 
Yeah, I get that quite a bit. And the best way to explain it is that I'm basically a channel for information to come through um, from the other side. So from spirits that have crossed over, from angels, guides, ascended masters. Primarily, though, I connect with those that you had some kind of connection with in in life. And um, it's never an exact science. Um, Thankfully, I don't literally see dead people's bodies walking around. (laughs) I'd probably be in a psych ward if I did. But for me, I like to think of myself as more of a uh, radio signal, or more of a receiver, actually, that gets these subtle impressions from spirit that I am um, trusting and knowing are real and then relaying them to whoever's come to see me. And um, through doing that, it's been, you know, life changing for for most and just um, what comes through, through that channel, um, without a doubt, solidifies that person's belief that there is somewhere that we go beyond this, beyond this life. So it's been wonderful. It is wonderful. Yeah. And uh, I guess uh, what I would love to just hear you describe a little is how you realized you had this gift. Um, did you mm-hmm. hear voices or did you see things or just have instinctive feelings or what kind of took you on this journey to pursue this as your life's path? Well, you know, I think that for me, I grew up um, Christian and, no, and you know, I was taught that when you die, you are asleep till the resurrection and There were all these rules. And so I think that spirit knew that I needed something concrete and really, really dramatic to get my attention. So um, I was 14, almost 15 at the time, and my mother passed away unexpectedly. And um, she was in New York and I was in California and I was able to see her the day that she passed away. And um, of course, I was heartbroken. It was just the most awful thing to experience for for a a kid at that age and um two nights later i was awakened by her spirit and she woke me up and i could see her vividly and um she told me that she was going you know that she was okay and that she was going to help me help other people and I I did not know what to believe. I thought I was crazy. <laughs> and um, after that point, there were strange things that happened, like, you know, phones ringing where you could I could actually hear her voice, you know, on the phone signal. Um, and I just became obsessed with the death after that moment. And I still was skeptical after that moment. I thought that maybe I was making it up or it was a dream. Um, and a few weeks later, you know, I was in, um, Orange County and I, um, was walking with some friends in an outside strip mall and we walked by a psychic shop. And of course we were like laughing about that. We thought it was a whole bunch of baloney (laughs) until the actual psychic walked outside and approached me and told me that I had this amazing gift and that I was going to help people all, all over the world with it. And it would be about three years before I would understand what that was. And I thought that she was off her rocker, of course. Um, okay. And it wasn't until three years later that I found myself in a um, metaphysical shop randomly. And um, they they were having a class on mediumship. And I was so obsessed with, with you know, death and the afterlife and what, what is real that I just left myself open to receive whatever was around me. And I literally walked into the shop and it was a two hour class. And I was sat down with a stranger and I was asked to basically close my eyes, hold the person's hand and tell them what I was seeing, basically giving them a reading. And this was complete, you know, I have, this was my first time ever doing this. And that night changed my life because that night I understood what this was and what it was for me was not what I was expecting because we, you know, um, at that time, you know, the sixth sense had come out with, with the boy that saw dead people around him. And, you know, the media really kind of sensationalized what it was like to be a psychic. And so I thought that's how it's supposed to be. And in that class, it was a very subtle process where I literally thought I was making it up. It was so subtle. It was just in my mind. And, Basically, what happened was I held this woman's hand, and within a matter of minutes, I, w- I had, you know, 
connected her with her best friend who had committed suicide of a drug overdose. And I was able to even give her details down to her name, how it happened, what she looked like, et cetera. So wow. from that from that moment on, I thought, OK, this is weird. <laughs> what do I do with it? And it took me years to really trust it. I was in this doubtful stage for a good five, six years where I was still doing readings and I was trying to distrust it on my path, but I just didn't think it was right for me. And so I was also pursuing a degree in opera performance, actually, where I got my degree. And um, when I was in school, I was always getting sick and I was always having people seek me out still to help them with, with my gift. So when I graduated, I decided that this is this is my my calling. I mean, I can't run from it any longer. It's just I have to trust it and go with it. And so I did. And and now here I am today and I help people all, all over the world. So I'm very grateful that I listened. And and spirit has a way of doing that. Right. Yes, it has a way of they pushing do. us. <laughs> <laughs> I like to call yeah. it giving you a big four by four to the forehead. You know, they literally <laughs> know how to get your attention when you need, when you're not listening. And they did in, in my case. <laughs> yes. Yes. And it's like you have this gift. You want to use it. But it's scary because. It's oh, like absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And I wasn't sure how people were going to take it at that time, you know people weren't really into it like they are today with you know through media and television and I was just frightened to share it with anybody I, I literally was in the closet with it and um, it took a while for me just to accept that you know this is my gift and I'm going to share it and once I did so many doors opened up for me and that's how, that was my confirmation that this was for me to do and Absolutely. so I kept on doing it and and here we are um, <laughs> yeah we're going to go to the first break right now, and when okay. we come back, we are going to explore so much more about this very fascinating subject of channeling messages from the other side, what it's like to receive these messages, can you turn it off and on, how do you deal with this, and uh, you know <laughs> what it's like. Um, so again, you're listening to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly, and I'm on the air with psychic medium Bill Phillips. Stay tuned, and we will be right back. Tune in to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly Neff. This hit show will illuminate your senses and empower you beyond your daily stressors and hardships. Renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly will captivate you with far-reaching topics and amazing guests as you wake to the greatest version of yourself. Learn to tap into your intuitions, think critically about our world, heal emotional and psychological wounds, and follow your passions to live your dreams. The Lucid Planet. Welcome home. Visit lucidplanetradio.com for more information. Tune in to the hit show Master's Chambers with your trusted friend, Connie Fife. Mondays, 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Each week, Connie will connect you with the best of the best thought leaders from around the globe to share their strategies and best practices. Getting better together. To book Connie, visit ConnieFifeSpeaks.com. Enlightening, humorous, and compassionate. Listen live to The Kelly Mallard Show, insight and inspiration from the great beyond. Kelly is a fourth-generation medium and intuitive who covers topics ranging from grief, spirit guides, and listening to your intuition. Kelly can help you get answers and guidance from the other side with a little bit of humor and a lot of healing. Tune in to The Kelly Mallard Show, Thursdays at 1 p.m. Pacific Time, here on TransformationTalkRadio.com. If you're one of the millions of Americans suffering from anxiety, you probably know how powerless and out of control this emotion can make you feel. This is why it is so important to remember that anxiety is created by your mind, which means that you can learn to use your mind to uncreate it. Hello, my name is Dr. Friedman Schaub. 
My award-winning book, The Fear and Anxiety Solution, provides you with a step-by-step -step breakthrough process to understand and resolve the root causes of your anxiety and build a solid foundation of confidence and inner peace. If you are ready to take your power back, visit thefearandanxietysolution.com. That's thefearandanxietysolution.com or call 866-903-6463. That's 866-903-MIND. And if she should tell you, come closer. And if she tempts you with a charm. We are back on Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly. My guest today is psychic medium Bill Phillips, who is talking with us about what it's like to channel messages from the other side. Uh, before we continue, Bill, I just want to make sure everyone knows how to contact you. Um, so could you give us your contact info for people who want to learn more about your events or schedule a personal reading with you or buy your book? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's just my name, BillPhillips.com, and Phillips is spelled with one L and two P's. So it's a little bit different, but it's P-H-I-L-I-P-P-S.com, BillPhillips.com. Perfect. And you can find out so much more about Bill if you just visit that website and read some pretty incredible testimonials as well, I might add. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so I wanted to jump right in because um, we still have so much to talk about, of course, yeah. um, about the way that the messages come through to you. And yeah. if this is something that you can turn on and off, does it make it tough for you to have relationships? And um, also, you know, who you are actually speaking to, and maybe if you could go into a little bit more detail about that. So let's start at the start. Can you turn it on and off? Yeah, okay. That's a good question. I cannot turn it completely off. I feel like it's, I'm always sort of streaming to a certain extent, um, but what I can do is I can ignore it. So I like to give the analogy of somebody nagging you, you know, and they keep <laughs> on going on and on and on, and you have the opportunity to like check out mentally from that nag, and that's kind of like how, what I do is when I when I'm not doing my work and I'm like you know in the grocery store or at a restaurant and I start to feel someone come up to me in spirit, I can just ignore them and say no, I'm sorry, because you know for me personally and ethically, I don't do it unless somebody has come to seek me out. I don't go seek them out. So that's always been my rule with doing this work. Um, gotcha. So, yeah. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably a good way to go because I'm sure that every person you interact with, they probably have spirit guides or deceased family members or angels or whatever you want to call it that are kind of surrounding them and wanting to transmit these messages. Um, oh, yeah. But, and yeah. Especially when a, um, you know, a loved one who's crossed over, when they know that there is a you know, a genuine channel around, they will do whatever they can to knock that door down to get their attention. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me more about the different types of entities or spirits that you come into contact with and how they sure. differ. Well, typically, um, with the majority of my work, it's really a matter of, um, connecting with those that have crossed over that were at some point connected to the, to the person that I'm reading for in life. And a lot of times I find that let's say grandparents or sometimes even parents that passed away younger will be sent as their guide through this life. So like my mother who passed away when I was 14, she's one of my main, gu main guides and spirit that helps me over there. Um, so typically it's it's primarily loved ones that we knew or had some connection to in life. And then we have spirit guides that we don't have to necessarily know in this life. We could have had a past life connection with them or they were just sent to us to help us through this life. And that's the other level of spirit that's higher than the, than the deceased loved ones. Then, uh, then above those are the ascended masters and the ascended masters are people that were that that basically lived highly evolved spiritual lives when they were here in the physical so you could think of like Jesus Christ Buddha Gandhi and they have continued that journey in spirit and a lot of times they you know they're sent to help the living as well um, then we have the highest form of spirit, which are the angels and the angels, um, 
have never been in a physical incarnation before. So they're pure love, pure energy, and they're the highest vibration of energy and spirit. So that's basically what I work with when I'm doing my work is with those levels of, of spirit. Doesn't sound like a bad bunch of colleagues. <laughs> <laughs> no, thankfully, it's, it's you know, perfect perfect for me because there's no you know animosity jealousy they're they're really just there to help people so that's perfect for me what what is um kind of like the main types of messages that you usually bring to people from these guides right well you know the primary purpose that they come through is to show them that the living that there is an afterlife and that they've survived and that they are around them they love them that's always the primary message behind it but in order to get that across to the living they need to do some proving of that so they will bombard them with validations um through me proving that it's them so um it's always a pretty unique process to see that because especially if somebody was skeptic coming in they're like okay i want to see what what's going to happen here and usually by the end of it they're like oh my gosh how how did that happen and i really just let i really make my intention to spirit okay if you want to get this ac across to your loved one please be strong come through clearly and give me things that only you two would know about and they do that pretty well actually so um that's what i go off of before I give a reading. So do you ever encounter, I guess, what someone would call a dark spirit or, you know, so much of Hollywood and the media is about mm -hmm. ghouls and ghosts and scary things. What is your take on all of that? Well, I really think it's a matter of what you, you know, what you surround yourself with, you'll get more of. So in my world, I, I made it a point to only, basically connect with those that are in heaven or in, you know, in, in the light of God. Um, the ones that are like darker energies or what some might call dark digits or even demonic forces, I do not deal with at all. And when I was younger, I, I didn't really know the difference between all of these. So I, yeah. I was going into it blindly and I was getting really drained because of it. I was going and doing like house clearings of, of ghosts and people's homes that were, completely, you know, t uh, terrified of what was going on in their houses. And, um, and I found that for me, that wasn't my strong point and I didn't want it to be my strong point. So I focused on what I knew was the, you know, the, um, most purest way of doing this work, which was, um, the healing aspect of it. Um, but I, I have had in the past a long time ago, those experiences with, with those that weren't crossed over into the light. And the only way I can really explain it is that they were just a much more dense energy that was not evolved. So I, I knew, I, I knew that they were not in that light because they were um, derogatory and they, you know, they're coming from a dark place and their, their language was different. And that's how I knew that it wasn't who I wanted it to be. So I decided, Oh, that's not for me. No, thank you. And, <laughs> and is pulled that out of that. Yes. Is that something that everybody can't do? Um, so, um, you know, many of us are connected to these kind of psychic or intuitive feelings, but right. we maybe are not nearly as advanced as you or we're still kind of questioning. But occasionally I've certainly felt these dense energies and I've talked to many people who have and they can get scared of them or they can get upset about it. Um, but do we have the ability to do the same thing, to say, no, you're not welcome in the space? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we all have the ability to protect ourselves spiritually and and to really be in control of that world. A lot of people think that they have no control over a ghost or someone coming around them. And you really do, but you have to be blunt about it and you have to be verbal about it. So I absolutely think that through um, just techniques of protecting yourself and through deep meditation and prayer, that that's definitely attainable. Um, and everybody has the ability to be intuitive and to be psychic. Um, but in my opinion, there is a difference between a psychic and a medium because a psychic is somebody who is tuning into the th uh, to people, uh, objects, energy of the of the living, basically things that have already happened, um, and they're able to get a sense for the future. Which, by the way, is not set in stone. We all have free will uh, when it comes to our future. Um, but a medium is somebody who sort of is able to take that 
a little bit further and um, connect with spirit. But at the same time of connecting with that energy, they have to use their psychic senses to bring through the information. So in order to be a medium, you have to have the understanding and know-how about how your senses work. So you have to, so basically you're both if you are a medium, um, which I think is more rare than just having intuition and being able to like, you know, see things or, or feel things because we all were given that as a birthright before we came into this world. Absolutely. I, you know, yeah. I, I'm glad you said that um, because many people think, well, I'll never have that skill or I, you know, I couldn't do that. But the reality is they can. We all have that ability, that intuition to understand the energy of life and where it might be going if we tune into it. Oh, absolutely. And we're, we're supposed to, as, as human beings, tune into that energy for our own good so that we can, you know, stave off disaster and go in the right direction. So we were put here almost yes. as a way to, to like find that connection. And many of us yeah, don't because we, we don't slow down enough or we're too wrapped up in our own drama. So lots of things can deter you from it and pull you away from it. Um, but it's always there, though, and ready for you to use if you're willing to, to go there. And, and how, does, how does one go there? Just by listening, by meditation, by quieting down the ego? Yeah, I think it's all of those aspects, really. It's a matter of getting back yeah. to the basics, I like to say, where you're basically just tuning out the outside world. And when you do that, you start to notice sensations and feelings that you didn't know were there. Um, and so those feelings, sensations, sounds will become stronger um, when you're able to tune out the outside noise. Um, so I actually at times teach about this in, in workshops where people can, in their own way, connect with spirit or intuition. But again, just like with any kind of um, art or, or talent, some people are, you know, pretty good singers and some yeah. people are Pavarotti. So it really just depends on, <laughs> on, on what you were chosen to do in this life in that There's regard. There's a natural inclination. Um, we're going to talk more about this after the break. Thank you so yeah. much to oh, Bill welcome. Phillips. Um, when we come back, we're going to talk more about spirit and soul groups and what that means and skeptics and the other side and so and, and how to get more in tune with this. So stay tuned and we will be right back. Tune in to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly Neff. This hit show will illuminate your senses and empower you beyond your daily stressors and hardships. Renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly will captivate you with far-reaching topics and amazing guests as you wake to the greatest version of yourself. Learn to tap into your intuitions, think critically about our world, heal emotional and psychological wounds, and follow your passions to live your dreams. The Lucid Planet. Welcome home. Visit lucidplanetradio.com for more information. Clairvoyance, a gift few have. And even fewer match the powers of one of America's best. Dr. Linda Salvin. Dr. Linda's uncanny ability drills to the core of your issues to bring you quick and accurate answers and predictions. In more than two decades, Dr. Linda has helped over 75,000 people. On national radio, by phone, in person. When you need answers, Dr. Linda makes it clear. Book your time with this legendary seer now. Click on lindasalvin.com. Or call 888-509-1077. Tune in to Prescience Life Radio with host Mia Simone. Mia is devoted to sharing her extensive knowledge on the invisible worlds of energy. Join Mia and discover the science of intuition and connect with your greatest gift. Start living in your potential today and every day by opening up to the power of inner knowledge. To learn more about Mia, visit presciencelife.com. Each 
month, listen to Live More Radio with co-host Ali Katz. Join Ali and Dr. Pat as Ali introduces new ways to bring balance back to your life through meditation, sleep, and exercise techniques so you can live your truly authentic life. Stress less. Live more. To learn more about Ali, visit atlzenmeditation.com. We are back on Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly, and I am here with psychic medium Bill Phillips, uh, talking about channeling, mediumship, the afterlife, and what I wanted to bring up going into this next segment is the skeptics. Um, I have been a skeptic, and I was before I had a reading with you. Um, so what do you say to the skeptics who don't believe in your work? Well, you know, I think there's a really big difference between a skeptical person and someone who's a cynical person. Because I really think that it's normal to be skeptical. A lot of people want to be shown that it's real. So I think to have a certain level of it is healthy and normal. But when somebody is completely closed off or they have no belief system in it at all, then it's a little bit different and I I just I've learned over the years not to take it personally thank god I haven't had a whole lot of experience with those kind of people but um but basically I come from a loving place and I always say that I'm here to help those people that want my help I'm not here to like you know shove it down anyone's throat or try to make somebody a believer I, I really think that the messages speak for themselves that I bring through so if somebody is completely closed off to it, then they're probably going to like find uh, any kind of excuse as to why it's not real or it's, you know, there, there's always going to be a, a negative association with it. But thankfully, I have not had a lot of experience with that in my work. I think you make a really good point about you're not trying to go around and tell everyone they're wrong if they don't believe in it. Right. You're trying to work with the people who are seeking answers and who are seeking healing and to help provide them with that. Um, exactly. So there's, yeah. It's a level of intention. Um, and so I guess my next question is, um, do you sometimes think you're crazy? Do people sometimes <laughs> think you're crazy? And, and I forgot to <laughs> kind of pursue it earlier. You know, what does this do when you're in uh, interpersonal relationships with people and your partners? And, you know, I've said to my partner before, it's really hard to be dating someone who's psychic when you can like <laughs> read my thoughts, you know, like, so how do you deal with the, the kind of craziness of it all as a human? You know, I kind (laughs) of laugh at it, honestly, and I just go, yes, I am to a certain degree crazy, if you want to call it that, because my mind is on a a different frequency. It just is. And I have to just accept it for what it is. It comes at that price that um, ignorance is bliss, you know, and um, in the past with relationships, it really was an issue because I, I knew too much. Um, but I'm in a very wonderful relationship now. And my, my partner is so <laughs> okay. And he says, well, I have nothing to hide from you. So there, there's no issue. And he actually is just completely um, fascinated by it. He thinks it's just amazing that he'll be thinking something and then I'll say it randomly or I'll <laughs> predict something, you know, before it happens. He just, he, he loves it. Um, and he's very support, you know, supporting of it and just encouraging of it. So, um, so right now it's working right. great, but I think for people that have this and they don't realize it, it probably causes a lot of, um, chaos in their world because they're not sure what they're working with. And, um, on a side note, I, you know, I, I feel very strongly that people that have mental illness or schizophrenia or things of that nature are just very sensitive people and probably very psychic, but they haven't learned how to really narrow down and, um, understand what it is that they have so instead they go for substance or they go you know for medications that maybe they wouldn't even need in that case to try to draw to try to drown out the you know the voices and sensations in their mind so um you know we we are all we were all born with sensitivity but i think that it's really important that 
you know how it works because if you don't, sometimes, you know, you can go in the wrong direction with it. That's such a great point. Um, yeah. So thank you so much for bringing that up. You know, yeah. as a psychologist and a mental health <clears throat> practitioner myself and being trained <clears throat> in this area, uh, I absolutely agree with you. And I think that, of course, you have to look at it on a case by case by case basis. Absolutely. But, yeah. You know, in many other cultures, when a person begins to develop the symptoms that we would label as schizophrenic, they are viewed as having a spiritual awakening. Exactly. And a spiritual experience. And instead of marginalizing or medicalizing or criminalizing them, the community rallies behind them and offers them support and tools to understand the transition that they're going through and help them cope with it. Um, and this is like a well-documented fact across the world. And of course, in our Western medical <laughs> pill popping society, it's very exactly. easy. You know, it's so yes. easy to marginalize these people because we don't understand it ourselves. And, you know, we have yet to see a framework that emerges that really helps to reconcile spirit with science. Right. And, you know, that the two both exist and that they need each other in order to to exist. So I'm glad that you brought that up because it's an important reminder to the people in our lives who are experiencing these types of what we label mental illness to show them an immense amount of compassion and oh, love. Absolutely. Yes. yes. And to listen and really to listen to them and, and to help enable them with tools. And maybe you can give some examples of maybe what these tools would look like um, that mm -hmm. help them to kind of understand what the voices are or what the frequencies or the feelings are and how to make sense of them. I think that's right. Really well, yeah, that, that's a great question. When I um, and I've worked before with people that were diagnosed with these illnesses. And the first thing to know is that when you are depressed or you're in that state, your vibration is at a lower level, a lower frequency. And so when you're at a lower frequency, you're going to be attracting what's at that same frequency, which is the reason why people that do suffer from these types of illnesses report back that they're hearing negative voices, telling them to do bad things, yeah. that they're not sure what to believe, you know, the list goes on. Um, sometimes before they go to that place of desperation, it might just start off as, oh, I saw, you know, a male in my room last night and I didn't know what to think of it. And then from there, as they feel isolation from the world, their vibration goes down, they get depressed and they feel lonely and it gets worse. So I, I would, I really would say that the best advice would be just to make yourself aware of what's of what's going on around you and to protect yourself. People um, don't always believe in the power of prayer, but it's very, very beneficial, especially if you um, blend that with meditation and just faith. Those things in themselves mm -hmm. will sort of lift your spirits to a higher level. Um, and, and again, like you said, it is case by case. Some people will need Western medicine to help them, but some will just need an open ear and, you know, encouragement and compassion, like you said. Absolutely. And, you know, when you say prayer, prayer is not a religious thing, although it's been conceptualized as that. But prayer right. really means your individual spiritual connection, whether that's expressed through positive affirmations or through meditations or through other kind of activities that connect you with spirit. For me, at least, all of that falls under the idea of prayer. Yes. Yeah. Prayer is basically your connection to the divine, to God, the source, the spirit. So. Mm -hmm. That's what I like to call it. Yeah, I think that's really yeah. important. Um, a question, a question mm -hmm. that I'm sure some people must be thinking. Um, <laughs> have you ever used this for your own gain? I mean, have you ever like psychically predicted the lottery numbers or, you know, used it for your own like financial gain or personal gain? Do you read for yourself or do you read for other people? Um, it's a funny question, but I don't know. I'm curious. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I feel like it's a little bit more difficult to do it for myself, although I, I do get really strong gut feelings and signs from my guides about certain things that I that even myself I don't always pay attention to that I'm like oh darn it why didn't I listen to that to that message um but um so to answer your question no I don't use it for personal gain this is just my way of giving back to the world and um I, you know I have had friends call me before and say hey we're in Vegas where do you know where should we go what you know <laughs> and you know as, as a joke and 
I don't, but no, I don't do that, right? I, I don't do that. It's not, yeah. it's not my place. And I, I like to come from integrity and, you know, a, a, a pure space when I do it. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, before we take another break, um, can you just give your contact info to our listeners one more time, Bill? Sure. Yeah. It's my, it's my first and last name, BillPhillips.com. And I also do, um, I have a Facebook fan page that I, um, give back to daily. I call it daily inspiration. So I, I write on there daily things that I hear basically from spirit that I relay awesome. to, you know, to the masses worldwide. So that's a great awesome. tool. And that's just yeah. psychic medium, Bill Phillips. Yes. On Facebook. On Facebook. Awesome. Mm-hmm. And that is a really great page. Okay. Oh, well, thanks. yeah, for sure. I love it. Um, and it, mm-hmm. it's great to see it grow so rapidly and so exponentially <laughs> as well. Um, yes. <laughs> Um, so this is Lucid Planet Radio, Dr. Kelly, and I will be right back with more from Psychic Medium Bill Phillips. So stay tuned. want the freedom to spend more time with your loved ones travel the world live spontaneously get ready because the chip justice show is here hosts dr pat basili and chip justice can help you build meaningful success while embracing life living a life you love is the end game in this new inspirational and empowering show positive changes for life you'll love Tune in every month on TransformationTalkRadio.com and visit PositiveChangeInstitute.co for more information. Dr. Linda Salvin, Metaphysical Master, now bringing insight and metaphysical abundance to your living room with her spirit-filled candle line, Wicks of Wisdom. Dr. Linda's unique formulations of pure and powerful herbs, oils, and essences can assist you in love, luck, finances, health, and more. Wait till you experience the power of Wicks of Wisdom. Find out how these amazing candles can help you. See them now and order yours at lindasalvin.com or call 888-509-1077 are you ready to thread your life with intuition intuit apparel can help you do just that this is not just about a piece of clothing this is about a movement an awakening and staying centered in life your life intuitive and host of the radio show get into it lynn brown was given this image with the intention of a clothing line designed to represent the essence of life itself. Visit IntuitApparel.com now and wear your intuition with... Introducing the Lucid Planet, a digital gathering place featuring cutting-edge, high-vibrational content that will empower and inspire you to become the greatest version of yourself. Visit the Lucid Planet today to stimulate your mind, body, and soul as you connect with a global community of like-minded people. The Lucid Planet is edited by renowned psychologist and author, Dr. Kelly Neff, who is here to help you cope with anxiety, connect to your higher purpose, uncover your true passions, and live your dreams. Dr. Kelly's fresh, compassionate perspective emphasizes growth, transformation, healing, and thriving. Even in the face of adversity, say goodbye to bad news and low vibrational media for good and become part of the larger collective of people working together to navigate the global shift of consciousness and transform the world from within. Join the planet, the Lucid Planet. Visit thelucidplanet.com. Welcome home. Artie Hoffman is the hottest psychic with the warmest heart and the host of the hit show Angels and Answers. A renowned psychic, medium, spiritual life coach, and an entertaining motivational speaker, Artie has helped over 15,000 people with his amazing intuitive gifts, his passion, and his humor. Call 877-ANGEL-02 to schedule a personal reading or to have your own psychic Artie party. That's 877-ANGEL-02. And visit ArtieHoffman.com and Angels and Answers on on Facebook. Oh, yeah. Uh, Welcome back to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly. I am here with psychic medium Bill Phillips, and we're going to wrap up the show. We still have so much to talk about, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) And one thing I really wanted to bring up that you have said to me in a reading before that really helped to align my perspective was the idea of these soul groups. And, 
you told me something along the lines of kind of we all reincarnate together in different roles to learn the lessons we need. And then we all kind of wait together on the other side until we're ready to come back in again. Was that right? Yes, absolutely. Right? Yeah. Um, this is coming from my personal opinion about spirit. And I, I find that a lot of times our soul groups are our families, both blood and those that we meet along the way from previous lifetimes. Um, and I have been shown before through spirit that when they cross over, like, for example, let's say that um, a couple that was married for 54 years and the husband dies, that husband is going to stay there watching his wife from spirit, making sure that she's OK, of course, and then waiting for her to go over there. And I, I usually um, say it's about two generations. So they have children, so they're going to watch over their children and their children's children until they've crossed over and they're back in that soul group again. And then they're going to decide, hmm, this lifetime, I'm going to come back as your daughter and I'm going to teach you about, you know, forgiveness and I'm going to die young and <laughs> you know, the list goes on. But yeah, it's almost like they're react, they're acting out these, um, these characters in different scenes and in different plays, but in, in a physical sense in spiritual sense. Yeah. And you know, strange as it sounds, um, that, that really made me feel at ease for some yeah. reason. Maybe because it resonates with my beliefs or my feeling or it feels intuitively true to me yes. because I feel like everyone in my life, I know them from somewhere else, but I can't quite remember. <laughs> and, you yes. know, you have you have these roles with people where they're like, oh, he feels like my brother or he feels like my son or she feels like my sister, but they're not. But maybe they have been or maybe, you know, we've all exchanged these roles thousands and thousands of times. Oh, until yes. We can learn to get it right. Absolutely. And, yeah. So I, I thought that was really interesting and, and important to throw that out there to keep in perspective that, you know, on the other side, there isn't any time and there isn't mm -hmm. any money, you know. Yes. All there is no celebrities there. We're all one. No one, yeah. you know, yeah. more important than somebody else. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think we can easily lose sight of that. I know all of us have our moments of losing sight of that. Uh, amassing as much as you can accumulate for yourself doesn't really change anything when you get to the other side. We're all equal and we're all right. And, and you leave everything here. That's physical. So that includes money. <laughs> so, yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. I always like to say, uh, my partner too, uh, money is only something you need if you don't die tomorrow. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's not a pessimistic approach. It's just being real about things. You know, we don't need, we don't take any of that over there. We just, we take our energy and our love for life and the world and for one another. Um, also, one more, one more question that I've been thinking about a lot lately. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're going to talk about the book, Expect the Unexpected, um, which it, my question is, do you ever see animals, like people reincarnate as animals, uh, like people's pets? Is, is that something that's been happening? I, I personally that? don't come from that school of thought. I believe that they all stay in their, you know, in their energy. So a dog will say a dog, a, you know, cat will say a cat, a cat will not come back as your mother or something. But there are, <laughs> there are different philosophies on it, which, you know, to each their own, if it feels right to you, then go along with it. But in my own work as a medium, though, um, I, I actually find that they, they keep their value over there in spirit. So gotcha. they're not, they don't come back as somebody else, basically. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for that. I've always been curious about it. Um, I really want to talk about your new book. We have five free digital downloads to give away to our listeners. Um, and you can call in or email the station or Transformation Talk Radio. Don't worry or, about how. <laughs> um, oh, you're okay. Or email me at Dr. Kelly Neff at Gmail. Um, so, Bill, um, why did you decide to write this book? You know, I wanted to share my story with the world and show people that no matter where you've come from, that there's hope, first of all, that you can achieve what you want to achieve. But also, I wanted to show people how this worked for me. And in that sense, how it was like a how-to manual for yourself. So it really is supposed to help you understand this from your own personal perspective. Um, and I feel like just the stories and my stories about how I came into contact with this and how I, I grew as a result of it 
really can be applied to every person that reads it, and they can get from it their own interpretation of how they can make their own connection to spirit. Um, so it, awesome. it definitely talks about my, you know, very sordid childhood, or, you know, where I came from and being homeless when I was in, in New York and parents were both drug addicts, but how I transformed that though through spirit. So it's definitely inspirational, but it also shows people that maybe are skeptical or just, you know, curious about this, how it works from my perspective. Very cool. And you said the book yeah. is out uh, sometime this fall? Yes, it'll be out around late September. Awesome. So stay yeah. tuned. And you can find links to where to pre-order on Amazon and Barnes & Noble on lucidplanetradio.com. And uh, it's going to be very exciting. I'm looking forward to reading that for sure. Oh, thank um, you. Also, you have a ton of of audience readings coming up and you have some small group intimate readings coming up and again all yes. of those will be listed on the website san jose west nyack new york brea california palm beach gardens florida dublin ireland cool <laughs> uh, great barrington massachusetts laguna hills california a lot of these coming up and what can people expect when they get a reading with you either in person or in an audience or as a one-on-one -on -one? well they can always expect the unexpected of course but they can expect to be given reassurance, validation, and just knowing that this is real. Um, and, you know, basically, they will be given guidance to use on their soul's path. And that's so important, because we're always, yes. we have, we're always asking for help. And, you know, many of us have been going through a lot of transitional periods, and a lot of struggles and growth, and with that becomes more struggle. Um, yes. You know, and it's always really nice to have the validation that spirit is there. And, um, oh, absolutely. Yes. And expecting it, it, the unexpected. <laughs> yes. And it also shows you how you can tap into it for yourself and just kind of be aware of the signs around you as well. Which is also, you know, incredibly important. And I think it's something that everybody has this gift to some extent if they choose to really honor it and go deep with it and try to learn how to use it. You know, and everyone can do this to some extent, maybe not to the extent that Bill can, <laughs> but um, <laughs> all of us have this ability and, and other senses that we've kind of lost over time. I mean, you remember being a child when no one's told you no and your creativity can just wander. And I feel like that unbridled creativity is so much a part of being a psychic of oh, saying so things. True. Right. Like saying things that they, they come into your head and they sound crazy, but it's what it's what my partner Jimmy calls the divine imagination. It's so true. And as children, we've been taught to like suppress that and we've been afraid of it. And it, it's happened. It happened to me when I was a kid as well. And it took a life altering moment for me to understand that that was real again. So everybody has it coming in here. And the whole point of it is to kind of cultivate it and take it with you through your life. Absolutely. Well, yeah. thank you so much, Bill. Um, it's been wonderful to have you on the show. And, thank you so uh, much. <laughs> really, thank you I so much. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, you shared such inspiring information with us. Um, I want to thank everybody for tuning in to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly. I had the most wonderful time today. And, um, Me too. Yeah, absolutely. Seriously, expect the unexpected. <laughs> uh, <laughs> please join me every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, and 2 p.m. Pacific. You can find me on thelucidplanet.com. Uh, find the archives on lucidplanetradio.com. And also, please come connect with me on Facebook and Twitter at The Lucid Planet with Dr. Kelly. And you can also find Bill on Facebook and Twitter at Psychic Medium Bill Phillips. Um, next week on Lucid Planet Radio, I will be interviewing author, healer, and spiritual health coach David Ian Cowan, and he will be here talking about healing the mind using the technique of mind field repatterning. So I think that's going to be a very interesting one from both the psychological and the spiritual perspective. So that's it for today. Have a great week, everyone, and sending you out with infinite light and infinite love. Take care, and I will see you next week. You've been listening to the hit show, Lucid Planet Radio, with renowned psychologist and author, Dr. Kelly Neff. 
Tune in each week as we illuminate your senses and empower you beyond your daily stressors and hardships. This hit show will captivate you with far-reaching topics and amazing guests as you wake up to the greatest version of yourself. Learn how to navigate the global shift of consciousness as you explore the deeper knowledge, passion, and purpose within. Visit lucidplanetradio.com for upcoming show topics and to contact Dr. Kelly.